Awesome. Okay, so let me just introduce myself. Um, my name is Leandra Flath. I am the clinical implementation team lead here at Matrix Care, um, specifically on the senior living solution. Um, I oversee a, see a team of consultants who implement this solution that you all are going to be uh, getting a training on today. So what I'm going to be doing is first, we are going to be walking through uh, three kind of areas within the elite site. The first of which are areas that are related to the resident. Um, within Senior Living Elite, you'll have the ability to manage vitals, orders, as well as some order sets, and there's some additional face sheet information that you'll, you'll find there as well. However, today, we're going to be focusing in on the vitals and the orders area of the resident section. And then from there, there is another area, um, which is going to be the facility area. You might call this community. Um, think of that as the term that's interchangeable here within the solution. And so what we'll be covering under the facility menu is first the scheduler. Um, within the scheduler area, this is where you're able to add and record community-wide tasks. Um, those are things that aren't connected to a resident. Um, it could be things like cleaning the front hall, um, stocking the supply closet, checking the refrigerator temps, things that you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis or on a regular basis, um, but they're not necessarily specifically tied to a resident. So we'll be covering that today. And then I'll also be covering an area called Verify Care Assist Tasks. This particular section is where all of those tasks that you have scheduled through your service plan, they're going to show in this area. This particular area actually allows you to temporarily change the schedule for those tasks without updating or modifying the service plan. Um, I do say that this is a temporary piece. Um, this is meant to be just a temporary change, for example, if um, a resident has requested that for a short period of time, the family take care of a particular um, item for them and they don't want your staff to do it, but it's really just very short term, say a week or two weeks. And so you have the ability to turn off that particular task from scheduling so that it doesn't show up for your aides to do. And then you can go back in and re-enable it when your aides are gonna be responsible again. So those are the types of tasks that are going to be covered in that particular area. And it makes, it'll make a little bit more sense once we dive in there, but I did want to just point out that there's kind of two different areas that we'll be covering under the facility menu. The next area that we'll be covering is also under facility reports. So there's different areas of reports within the elite solution, and they really cover three main areas, EMAR, orders, and point of care. Um, obviously, EMAR and point of care, um, that those two particular categories of reports are going to be pulling information directly from Care Assist. And Care Assist is where everybody will be documenting EMAR as well as your point of care. So documentation that takes place in that particular solution are going to flow back to the reports that I'm going to show you today. And they'll specifically be under EMAR and point of care categories. You'll also see that there's another category of reports that we'll be covering today, and that's around orders. And orders obviously being those specific medication orders, they could be general orders. Any order that you as a nurse are entering in on a resident record, whether they show on EMAR or don't show on EMAR, um, depending on the type of order that you've added, um, you'll be able to run reports under the orders section. The orders or category, um, examples of things that you might want to run under there might be physician's orders. That allows you to run a listing of any active orders that a resident has. Um, and so there's a report that you can run for that. Okay. So within the reports area, um, three kind of main categories that we'll be covering today um, and really related specifically to what takes place in Care Assist as well as what you are doing with your orders. Okay, so this agenda was attached to today's invite, um, so you can feel free to pull that up, mark it up, whatever you'd like to do. Um, again, this will be referenced back to during today's call, and then um, again, the recording will go out to Linda and then be sent out um, from there for you all to access. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and minimize the agenda here, and I'm going to go ahead and open up your site. Today's training site is the one that does exist within your particular community. 
Um, so your particular site uh, is where I'm going to be going, but I'm going to be logging into your training community. So the residents and everything that I'm going to be looking at are going to be fake, um, but I just wanted to point that out. Right away when I log in here, you'll notice that my view is going to be slightly different. Um, I am a corporate admin user and so I do have access to multiple facilities within the elite site. And so when I'm looking here, I'm directed to searching the facility. So I'm going to be able to see um, all of the different communities that reside within BHS's corporation. Okay. For your purposes here, you will not see the owning corporation. What you will see instead is just going to be that search facility. If you're a user that has access to multiple facilities, or if you don't have access to multiple facilities, instead you'll be directed to the resident search menu. And then that's where you're just going to pick your resident first. Okay. I am already logged in to my training community. And I can see that in the top right, where it says facility BHS senior living training facility. And so from here, going back to that agenda, I'm going to be working first under the resident menu. So I'm going to go over to resident menu here. Under the resident menu, I do want to first search my resident. And for those of you who, again, are only working within one facility, um, this is the page that you'll be directed to by default when you first log in. Okay, so right under search resident here, if I don't have a specific resident that I'm looking for, perhaps I'm just wanting to get a list of residents or see how many residents I have, I can simply hit search on this box and it's going to pull open all 20 residents that are within my building. And I can see here right at the top, it sorts first by that last name. So you can see Fred Brass is first, then Judith, and then so on. Then you've got your MRN or visit number, the unit that they reside in, their room, if there's an A or B bed, the physician, so their primary or attending physician, and then their current status. And status is where you're gonna see if they're currently in the building for in-house. Uh, leave of absence might show as um, hospital uh, transit, uh, transfer or um, if they're completely moved out, then you would just see not in house, but out of house, okay? Now from here, I am gonna go ahead, I'm picking on Frank today. So I'm gonna pick on Frank and select his name. Once I've selected the name, it's gonna bring me directly to his face sheet, okay? And so from the face sheet here, uh, you'll notice at the very top, we have our resident banner. And at the resident banner information, you'll be able to see just kind of a highlight uh, information about Frank. So you'll see that he is actually 100 years old. He was born in 1921. He's male. He was admitted in 2010, currently resides in 103 bed B in the East Hall. He is in-house. His primary or attending physician is Dr. Joe Anderson. His primary payer, he does pay privately for his services. And then over on the right-hand side here, I can see specific allergies. The allergies information, as well as any information you find on the banner here, is going to be pulling from the face sheet here. Okay. So as I move on down here under the demographic information, you'll notice that we've got the age, the name, gender, date of birth. Any of that kind of information, you'll notice that a lot of that is going to show right up here in the banner. Okay. If you do have a photo for the resident, you would upload that here. The upload of the image here, whatever photo you put in, is going to flow and follow that resident throughout the system. And that does also include Care Assist. So within Care Assist, your aides are going to see that exact same photo for Frank in our example here or whatever resident you happen to be working on. Now, as I move on down this page, I'm going to go ahead and minimize the demographics section. We've also got the census history. Okay. And this is just uh, specific information about admissions, um, referral, discharge information. For Frank here, we only see the admission date. Um, we, it doesn't look like we had recorded any information about where he was admitted from or what his referral source was. So you'll see that the information has been left blank. But as things start to be filled out for Frank, um, that information will be populated here. 
And Linda is going to be covering the actual fill out of the face sheet information per BHS's policies in a later call. Okay. One area I do want to specifically mention, however, is right under the advanced directives, excuse me, providers. Okay. Um, under the providers, the information that you enter here is going to directly relate to the order entry process. Okay, so when you go to enter an order for a resident, the physician or doctor that's going to be available for you to select from is going to be directly pulled from this face sheet. So if you don't have a provider that is listed for you to select, that just means that you haven't added one yet to the face sheet here for the resident. So it's a good idea just to make sure that you do that. It's very simple. You just hit the little plus sign here on the accordion to add that record in. So I just wanted to point out that that information does have to be here um, for your order entry process. In addition to that, allergy information. Okay, Allergy information that you enter here on the face sheet also does impact the order entry process. So specifically, I have entered some uh, event environmental allergies. However, if I had added, say, a drug allergy, that drug allergy that I enter here on the face sheet is going to prompt an interaction if, for example, I'm trying to enter an order for the resident that includes something that the, the resident is allergic to. So that does come directly from your face sheet. So whatever allergies you're entering here, um, specifically related to drug allergies, are going to pull to the order entry process. Okay. Also, the ICD-10 codes, if you do happen, happen to capture ICD-10 diagnosis codes, this information also does pull to the order entry process. So you're able to identify a specific diagnosis um, for the medication or order that you're entering. Okay, so those three main areas are really um, going to directly affect your order entry process. So that's going to be again, the uh, ICD-10 codes, the allergies that you've entered, as well as the providers that have been added to that residence face sheet. Okay. And again, being able to walk through and add this information, Linda will be covering that with you, but I did want to point out just how that is going to interact with the order entry process. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and go back up to the top page here under resident. From the resident menu, I am now going to go ahead and work over the vitals. Okay, so the vitals menu is located on the right hand side. Um, depending on your view, it might be in the middle, um, depending on how much access you have. So I'm going to go ahead and select vitals. Okay. The vitals page here does integrate with Care Assist. So whatever you have entered inside of Care Assist, if it happened to have been something that was documented as part of an order administration or also just as port point of part of part of point of care. That information does flow to this screen, so it is going to be showing truly the last 30 days of vitals, whether it was entered in Care Assist, or you also have the ability to add the vital here um, if you happen to be working in Elite um, when you're looking at this. Okay. For Frank here, I do see that I don't have anything listed for the last 30 days, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and add a vital. And I'm going to select the type of vital that I'm going to be taking. So I'm just going to go ahead and take blood pressure here. Go ahead and select next. And then I want to go ahead and enter in that reading. So from here, <coughs> excuse me. Let's do two. Oh, well, that's very high. Let's do 145. And we'll do 88. Okay. Now, the questions that I see here are going to be the same questions that will display in Care Assist. So if you enter it there, it will re require the same entries. Okay, so what's the position for the resident? So this person is sitting, activity level, um, I'd say moderate, location, we use the right arm, and then the type of device, we did use the automatic. Now, with the events and observations, um, these are not used, utilized right now, and so you can actually go ahead and skip right over those two um, prompts and go directly to the date time taken and then the taken by. You'll notice that this information does pre-populate for today's date and time, as well as the user who's logged in. Um, so this being me who is logged in is the one that's prompted here. Okay, 
Now, if I happen to take it, this maybe a few minutes ago, but I'm just getting to the system to be able to enter it, um, I can go ahead and update that um, to make it actual uh, valid time or the correct time. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save here. That's gonna go ahead and add it to the page. So now I'm gonna be able to see that blood pressure. If I go ahead and open up the left-hand carrot icon here, you'll get the additional detail about that position, activity, location, and device. Okay, so here I can see that blood pressure. There's one piece here where under the um, out of range vital, okay? Now let's say that Frank here, um, I do note that I remember I placed a um, diabetes diagnosis on his particular record. And what I'd like to do is I want to go ahead and configure an alert if his blood sugar were to fall out side of a particular range. What that alert does is it's going to prompt my caregivers or my resident assistants or med tech or whomever might be working in care assist. If they go ahead and enter a blood sugar that falls outside the range that I've set, they're gonna get a warning message letting them know that that is outside of range. The outside of range alert will also show if you enter the, or the vital here inside of elite and it's also going to show on your dashboard. Um, there is a dashboard widget um, where any time a vital is taken that outside, falls outside of the acceptable range, regardless of what type of vital it is, it is gonna show on that dashboard. So it's gonna be very visible for you when you log in, you can see when that's happened. In order to set or configure that resident alert, it is located at the very bottom of the vitals page for the resident. And in here, you'll notice that it defaults to inherit. The ranges that you see here are inherited from the corporate settings, which for BHS, the temperature range is 96.1 to 100. That's the inherited option. If I need to customize here for Frank, I can customize that. Uh, maybe he does happen to, well, that actually fits pretty well. Even if you were, were to run a little bit low um, for his normal body temperature, by and large, it's gonna fit within that range. But the one I wanted to look at here was that blood sugar. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the blood sugar one. There's blood sugar. And you'll notice again that it is inheriting. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to customize this for Frank, okay? So for Frank here, I'm just gonna go ahead and modify the minimum and maximum blood sugar um, that's acceptable for him. So for him uh, right now, it's showing 59.4 and the max blood sugar is 110. However, because he is has uh, diabetes and I will actually be adding an insulin scale to him, a sliding scale insulin medication to his particular record, um, I don't necessarily want this to be triggering every time I enter a blood sugar because most likely it's going to be out of range for the acceptable normal individual. So I'd like to make it a little bit higher for him so I'm not constantly told that it's out of the acceptable range. And so for him, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit higher. So I'm going to do 140. Okay. You'll notice that as soon as I have entered the max blood sugar, the MMOL this particular reading over here automatically changes that to a decimal value, okay? So if I were to say enter 60 here, okay? This has been, an, uh, this has adjusted that value, but as soon as I hit save here, it's actually going to let me know that there are, this is actually not an acceptable value. And that's simply because I've got too many decimal points. Okay, so it does only allow one decimal point value for each. So what it's going to do here, when I hit save, you're gonna see that. Go ahead and modify that to bring it back down to one decimal value. And it's automatically going to adjust the minimum and maximum value um, to be in line with that requirement. Go ahead and save that change. Okay, now that I've entered that particular vital alert, it's brought me back to the vitals page here and I'm gonna go ahead and enter a blood sugar that is out of acceptable range. So you can see what that out of range alert is going to look like. Okay. 
So I'm going to go ahead and select blood sugar. I am going to actually do 160. Okay. And you'll notice right away, I get a yellow banner in red letters, vital out of acceptable range. And it does also provide to me what that minimum and maximum value is. Okay. I am still going to move forward with this entry. And then what I'm going to do here, this is high. And then down here, um, this is correct. Let's actually do 12, 20, 122. Go ahead and save that. Okay. So it does notify the user right when they're doing the entry that it is out of acceptable range. And it also displays on this page indicating that that value was out of acceptable range as well. Um, so you'll be able to see in red as well as that little um, warning symbol with that triangle. Okay. If there are um, more than uh, last 30 days, maybe you want to search for a value or a vital that was entered two months ago, for example, or you're wanting to see a trend there, you can actually go ahead and select to search vitals. Okay. And let's say I'd like to see the vitals for the blood pressure. And I'm searching specific dates. So for me, I am going to go ahead, I'm going to look back at the month of November. Okay. Uh, date taken, um, vital type I've already selected because I did select blood pressure. Okay, that is the only one that I've taken so far for Frank. And so that is the only one that displays. However, again, if you were looking and use, like, utilizing this regularly, you would, not, you would see that nice history here. So you'd be able to see if that blood pressure is trending up or down, um, depending on that date range that you've selected for your search criteria. I'm going to go back to the vitals home. So there's a link here at the bottom. And it's going to bring me back to where I was at. Okay. Most recent vitals. This page by default does look at the last 30 days. If you select most recent vitals, um, this is really going to be much more slimmed down. This is going to be whatever the most recent ones were entered. Since these are both entered on the same date, those are the ones that gonna, are going to display, especially since it is today's date, okay? So the difference is really what was the most recent vitals that were taken, and that could be within the last seven days. If I didn't have anything entered here today, but maybe I had entered in something a month ago, that entry that was from a month ago would be the most recent vital that would show here because that was the last vital that had been taken. Okay, so just whatever is the most recent uh, in terms of date and time, those are going to be the ones that show. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the vitals homepage. Okay, from here, um, the vitals, again, this is something that is going to integrate with Care Assist. So whatever alert you set here will also display in Care Assist. Anything you enter in Care Assist will display here. It becomes searchable. And in a way, you can then utilize this to see those trends up and down. Okay. Now, referencing back to our agenda, that was the first bullet item on our agenda, okay, was the vitals area. From here, we're going to walk through order entry. It's again right under the resident menu still. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. So, right under the resident menu, I have not selected another resident. So when I go and I select orders here, it's going to bring me directly to Frank Smith's orders. Okay. So as I'm under Frank here, I don't have any orders that have been entered for him. So I do see a blank page here. If I needed to switch to a different resident, right here, there's a, per, a people to arrow people. Um, this is actually allows you to switch residents. So what that's going to do is it's going to bring you back to that search residence page so you can then select a different resident. Okay. Now I am totally fine using um, Frank again. So I'm just going to go ahead and search for him. There he is. And again, will bring me back to the active orders page. Okay. On the orders page here, you'll notice that I've got an add order button. And then I've got some links down here at the bottom. Okay. As you actually start to utilize and enter orders in, these links are going to become much more important. So I'm going to go ahead and add a few examples of orders, and then we'll cover the links here at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and add one order here. Under the type, 
we have prescription general lab radiology and you'll actually see here that there are uh, standing orders admission order sets antibiotic order sets coumadin warfarin so depending upon the type of order that you are entering um, you can select from the type values okay um, for me i do want to go ahead and enter in a prescription order go ahead and select prescription by default the pharmacy that is on um, our residence record here for Frank is Anderson Drug. And so when I open that provider drop down here, that is the pharmacy. So that's the one that defaults in my selection here. When I go ahead and select next, you'll notice it has tell it's telling me that drug to allergy interactions will not trigger. And that's because drug allergies have not been defined on the face sheet. So this really goes back to that face sheet information. I had only entered environmental allergies for Frank. And so as a result, I'm not gonna get any allergy interactions for the drugs that I'm entering. Okay. I am gonna go ahead and accept and move on. Okay. And the first order that I'm going to enter is gonna be a Novolog. So I'm gonna go ahead and do an, a sliding scale insulin. Uh, so there's the flex pen. Okay. Go ahead and select that. Once I've selected the particular drug, you'll notice that the receive date and start date default um, to today's date, along with my username, since I'm the one that's currently logged in and doing the entry. If these dates need to be modified, maybe I received this today, but it's not supposed to start until tomorrow, I can change that start date. I also have over here where I can select to leave it open-ended or if there is truly an end date on this, maybe this happens to be an antibiotic and it's only a 10 day regimen, I could go ahead and enter that end date for 10 days. This isn't gonna be an open-ended order though, so I'm gonna go ahead and select open-ended. Okay. You'll notice here we've got drug name. The fields that are in bold become required, but you'll notice that a lot of them are already pre-filled out. Okay, so that received date, start date, received by, drug name, form, strength, and route. Okay, and then we get here where we've got our frequency. Okay, for Novolog here, I do want to actually enter in a per sliding scale. And so you'll notice here the system does give me the option to select per sliding scale. And that option is only given because this is an insulin. Um, and so the system does recognize that and gives me this option. Once I select it, okay, I am gonna go ahead and select the ranges. So if the blood sugar is less than a certain blood sugar value, um, so let's say lower than 60, um, call MD. If blood sugar is between say 60 and 100, give two units. Actually, let's not do that. Let's do 100 to 150. And then I can actually use this plus sign over here. What that allows me to do is add a next range value. And that's actually gonna take that last value that I entered, automatically add one point, and then have that be the starting value for the next range. That just ensures that you don't have any gaps in the range um, so that you're actually giving the correct unit. Or when you get an, an enter it in a reading, it has the units available for you to uh, know what to give. So this is going to be 200. So however many range um, sliding the scale you want. So we'll do 300 here, eight. And then if it is, uh, if the blood sugar is greater than 300, um, go ahead and give 10 units and then also would like the MD to be called if it's above 300. Okay. Now that being said, now here is the actual frequency. So how often am I to be giving this particular sliding scale insulin? So I'm going to go ahead and open up my frequency options here. And this is actually should be done before meals and at bedtime. I'm going to go ahead and select that option here. By default for this particular frequency, the setups are defaulted to 6 a.m., 11, 4, and 8. If these values are accurate and work within the before meals and bedtime range for this particular resident, 
you can leave those. If it is different, then you can modify this. So for example, if this is a bit too early, maybe he eats a little bit later, and maybe so this is going to be 7 a.m. instead of 6, I can go ahead and enter that. And then for bedtime, maybe this actually needs to be, you know, closer to like 8.30 instead of 8. You can adjust the time values here if you need to for this particular resident. Okay. And then as I move on down, these special instructions. These special instructions are going to show in Care Assist on the EMAR. Okay, so this is actually what the instructions are that the uh, med tech or if it's the nurse that's going to be giving this, these are the instructions that they will see. So in here it'll say, you know, uh, give per sliding scale. Um, depending on the detail of this particular entry, what you've got on the order from the physician, um, you can add that detail in here, or if it's less, you use more of just the general give per sliding scale as I've entered here, you can do that as well. Okay. The entry within uh, Care Assist, the information that I've entered here under the sliding scale range, that will also show in Care Assist on that order. So this area is going to display for the user so they'll be able to see exactly what those, um, what that scale is and how many units to give. Okay. As I move on down here, under the diagnoses, uh, specifically for the ICD-10, this listing here is going to pull from the face sheet. So this information, these are the three diagnoses that have been entered on Frank's face sheet. If for some reason you're not seeing the appropriate ICD-10 code, there is an option here to add a new diagnosis um, where you can then go and search for that ICD-10 code. It will add it also for the order here, but it's also going to add it to the resident's um, face sheet for future use. Okay. For us, this is going to be the diabetes um, ICD-10. And then under here, we've got tasks to record. Tasks to record are additional tasks that must be completed on the medication administration. So inside of the EMAR, when the user goes to actually give this particular insulin medication, I'm going to require that they record the blood sugar. And I'm also going to require that the site of the administration be recorded. The site is going to be located under med notes. Okay. These two values, site and blood sugar, work hand in hand with the insulin sliding scale. So when the user enters the blood sugar reading, that blood sugar reading is going to be picked up and then per the sliding scale that I've entered here, if the user enters say 160, that falls within this range and the user will be told via the units med note to give four units, okay? So by having the units med note selected as well as the vital of blood sugar, the user is then going to be prompted how many units they should give based upon the blood sugar reading. The site of administration, that actually has a great use in the sense that when you are requiring them to record the site, if the, the resident has multiple injectable medications, anytime the site of an injection is recorded, the user can actually reference back to that and actually can see what those injection sites were so they can alternate those injection sites moving forward. So for example, Frank, if he has also say a B12 injection, uh, both medications would want to have the med note of site added to those orders. And then regardless of what order the user happens to be looking at, they can always look at that um, vitals injection or last injection site option to be able to see and alternate that injection site. So these two options here really have a great impact in how things show in Care Assist and the additional prompts that the user is going to see and get. So I'm going to go ahead and select site here. As I move on down, the flow sheet here, it does default to the medications flow sheet because I did say I did select prescription when I went to add the order. Okay. Under the flow sheet here, there are several other options. So in here, I can see what those other options are. 
So whatever flow sheet is most appropriate, if this happens to be a medication or an order that a nurse, only a nurse should administer, you'd want to assign that to that particular flow sheet. If it were something related to a COVID-19 task, you would want to assign it to that particular flow sheet. The flow sheets actually allow the user to filter different orders in the EMAR. So they can actually focus in on just those nurse only administrations that they need to do, or if they wanna look at all COVID-19 related administrations, there's some filtering options that are allowed by selecting the appropriate flow sheet here on the order. Okay. For our purposes, medication is the most appropriate. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. Ordered by, you'll notice here it actually has defaulted. And that is simply because Joe Anderson is actually the primary physician here for Frank. And you can kind of still see that here in the banner. So that's coming from the face sheet there. Okay. However, you'll also see that there is an additional provider that's listed in that drop down. So on Frank's record here in his actually on his face sheet, he has an alternate physician, um, Mark Johnson. And so if he does have alternate physicians, if you've got additional providers that have been added um, outside of the primary, they'll still be here in this list to be selected. Um, but by default, it is going to select the attending physician first. Okay. Order source. So did we receive this particular order via phone, verbal, or written? Okay. And is there any pharmacy directive? So does this need to be dispensed as written? Is substitution permitted? What is that particular option? Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select next. It's gonna ask that I review this. And it looks like here I've got an order with a sliding scale requires a unit med note. So it's letting me know that I'm actually missing a key med note. So as I move on down here, There's site, and then here's units, okay? So I wanna go ahead and add that one in. If I had not selected site, that would also have been a required option or med note. So again, the user will be prompted to add that, but it is just helpful to know that those do have very key impacts on the actual administration of the order too. And as I move on down here, I'm just reviewing what I've entered previously. Go ahead and select next here. Confirm my order. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. If I do have the order um, signed on paper, I can go ahead and select this checkbox here to indicate that. If not, um, however you're currently capturing the signatures for your orders um, would continue. Um, however, you can't indicate that you do have a signed paper copy utilizing this checkbox. Go, go ahead and hit save here. That's gonna bring me back here. I now have the prescription order, order information. So it no longer says confirm the order. It actually just is letting me view it. So this is actually now an active order. Once I select back, it's gonna bring me to the main orders page. And here I'm gonna see that Nova log, okay? I'm gonna be able to see here under signed, if I had selected, the checkbox there, this would actually have a little green checkbox instead of a red X, okay? I can see that this is a prescription. Here's the specific detail regarding that particular Novolog, start date, end date, as well as the flow sheet that this has been added on. On the left-hand side, you'll notice that there is a big red DC. This is actually the discontinue button. If I needed to discontinue this order, I would simply select the DC op option. It is gonna bring open that particular order. I would select the discontinuation received date. So if I received it today, but this is actually, um, you know, DCing uh, by Friday or for example, um, then I would select that. And then I've also got the timestamp, the who actually received the discontinuation order and then who actually ordered it. So was it Joe? Was it the alt uh, alternate physician? Okay. And then did we actually have the DC order signed on paper? And then I could go ahead and select DC. 
for our purposes, I'm not going to do that. I don't want to DC the order. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit cancel. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually add another order. So this time I'm gonna go ahead and add. And this time I am going to go ahead and add a general order. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. And the general order, um, this particular option here, you'll notice that you still have a received date, start date, received by. So whomever, whomever actually is doing the entry is gonna be the one prompted here. And then we have our order description. Okay, this is what actually, think of this as sort of the general outline of what is this order related to. Um, perhaps this is a um, clean nebulizer hose, okay? How often do I want this to be done for Frank? Okay. So perhaps this needs to be done weekly. And so I'm gonna go ahead and Look for my weekly option in here. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'm going to select this one and then I'm going to make it weekly. So I'm going to select every other day, but I'm actually going to go ahead and adjust this to customize this. And I do want to make this weekly. So I'm going to go ahead and select the weekly under the repeats on. Okay. This is going to be every other or every week. And I do want this to be every, let's do Tuesday. Okay. So the way that this is now set is every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Okay. I am going to have a general order to clean the nebulizer hose. This general order will display on EMAR. Okay. And so this is a way for you to see that order alongside the other medications. So if you happen to do um, an inhaled antibiotic or inhaled medication, um, you might wanna clean the nebulizer hose um, kind of right around that same time or right after the usage. So in here, um, special instructions. So this is, you know, how would you like this person to clean the hose? Okay, so. And so from here, I can go ahead and enter those special instructions. If there is, again, a, an associated diagnosis with that, I can go ahead and select that as well. And then for this particular purpose, there isn't really any task that would be required in terms of a vital. And if I go ahead and I look at these med notes, there isn't really anything on this either that I'd like to add. Um, this is really just something I want them to indicate that they have cleaned the nebulizer hose. And so no additional tasks with this. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and assign this to a particular flow sheet. This is just a general order, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it on a general flow sheet. Okay, go ahead and hit next. I'm going to go ahead and confirm the general order. Okay, and go ahead and save. And so from here, I can see again that general order right alongside my prescription order, okay? Right at the bottom here, as I had started adding orders, there is some additional links that became available, okay? The one that I really wanna highlight here is this amend administration, okay? This amend administration is really only available 
purse key users. So you do have to have the security to be able to utilize this area here. And I'm actually gonna go and I'm gonna swap my resident. I wanna select someone who's actually got some orders. I'm gonna work on Walker. There we go. Okay, so Helen's got some orders in here. Okay. Now, as you start to utilize Care Assist and you're giving medications through the EMR, if you need to go back and modify an administration, that is done directly on this orders page right at the bottom using this amend administrations. So if I go ahead and select that, I would first wanna search for the particular order that I need to amend or the administration I need to amend. I'm gonna go ahead and look for prescriptions, search, okay. These are the prescription orders that Helen has. And right here, if I need to amend, say, um, this particular a med a medication that was given for acetaminophen, right? So you'll notice it's by drug, not necessarily by administration time yet. I want to amend an administration for acetaminophen. So I'm going to go ahead and select under the action, amend. Okay. Once I've done that, it's going to bring me to the administration history for this particular drug for Helen. And then as I move on down here, here are the possible administration times for this particular medication, okay? So I can see that I have, um, per the instructions here, looks like I can give this every four hours as needed. So that brings up six potential administration times on, in a given 24 hour period. And so I can see that each of those administration times is numbered. So I have one through six for the 19th. And then here I've got one through eight, six for the 18th. And it does look like I gave one administration um, on the 18th um, for the very first administration there. Okay. Let's say I needed to amend this. Either I can amend the one that I've already done, or perhaps I actually did give the second dose here and I didn't for some reason record it. I can go in and I can select amend, okay. amendment reason. Okay, um, this is actually prepped. Okay, and let's say the, it was just simply charted late. And then as I move on down here, what's the reason? So why was this uh, medication given? Um, we'll go ahead and say it was again for pain. Okay. PRN reason comment. Again, kind of keeping in mind that if you have uh, in bold, those are the required fields. You'll notice there's a couple in here. Whenever you select a PRN reason um, and, or a late reason up here, you'll notice it's gonna bring open that particular option here. So why? What is that pain? So perhaps Helen had a headache. Headache unresolved from first administration. Okay. So we gave that second administration medication. And as a result of the second administration, it was actually effective. So I'm gonna go ahead and record that this was effective. And then I can say, you know, if there's any PR, additional PRN comments, you'll notice it's grayed out. If I select other, that then becomes required because I do need to provide additional detail. However, this is effective. And so I, I'm just going to go ahead and select that. The PRN result code or result option here does not then become available. The options again that you see here under PRN reason, um, results, the administration, this information is also available within Care Assist, okay? However, it is only available when actually documenting that you have given the medication. If you do need to go back and adjust an administration that is now missed, this would be the way that you need to do that, is again, through this particular page on the orders page. Okay, go ahead. 
to save this. Okay, looks like if I'm looking here, didn't look in the late administration here. Okay, so the administration has been successfully amended. And so now as I'm looking here, I can see the first administration that I gave, okay? And then here, uh, we gave a second dose uh, because the headache was unresolved from the first administration. And so um, as a result though, this was effective. Okay. Now from here, this is again, only if you need to amend an administration. I'm gonna go ahead and get back. Go ahead and view my active orders here. This can bring back me to the main page. Okay. And as I'm looking down here, I can see that there are a couple of additional ones. The search order history, this actually allows me to see any discontinued orders alongside the active orders, okay? So what this allows me to do is if I have a medication that's been DC'd and then reactivated and you've got a couple of different kind of corresponding dates, you can actually see them side by side by using the search function here. So from within here, um, I've chosen to include my active orders. So those are all of the orders that Helen currently has. And by default, it's gonna also show for me any that have been discontinued or um, held or, or anything like that, okay? Now, it doesn't look like I've got any DC for her, but um, I'd be able to see those date ranges on here. And I'd be able to see, you know, this particular medication was started on this date. The new dose was perhaps started the very next day. So I could actually see that history in here, allowing me to be able to identify when uh, an order has actually been modified or changed. Um, maybe the dosing was increased or perhaps it um, needed to be discontinued for whatever reason. And you can actually see the timeline for that. Okay. In addition, the smart search here actually allows you, so if maybe you've had the resident for quite a bit of time and there's been a lot of, say, acetaminophen orders, okay? You can actually use the search to filter down for just the acetaminophen orders, and that's gonna show you the history for just that drug for that particular resident. And then with that being said, you can go ahead and print that. Okay, so this screen is printable. So what you've entered here, you are able to print out if you need to get that particular listing out for whatever reason. So the search order history is a full history of all orders that have been entered for the resident, um, discontinued, held, um, changed, updated, whatever. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and clear out that search and bring myself back. I'm not going to include those active orders here and you can see I don't actually have anything that's been deceased in this particular time range. To the left of the print button, there is a view active orders, and that's just going to bring me back to that main orders page for Helen. Okay. Awesome. Go ahead and open up my agenda again here. Okay. So in here, we've gone through vitals and orders. Okay. Under the scheduler, we now want to move into the facility. Okay. And there's specifically two areas that I wanna cover there. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize my agenda here again. I'm gonna move back up to the top. And we're gonna to go to the facility menu. And over on the right-hand side, you'll find scheduler. So go ahead and open scheduler up. And in the community scheduler, we are looking specifically at non-resident tasks. Okay. Non-resident tasks are going to be those, again, community-wide tasks, things that you need someone to do that aren't directly related to a resident, but help your community run. Things like cleaning the break room, mopping floors, um, things like that, okay? So what I can do here is I'm gonna go ahead and add a schedule. The resident task name 
this is actually what the task is. This is what's going to show up inside of Care Assist for the person to see. The task's names, whatever you schedule here, will show alongside the to-do list for the, for the aides. And the to-do list is where all resident tasks display. That just allows them to kind of see them together in terms of time. If they are working through their day, they're able to see community-wide tasks that are due at a specific time alongside their resident tasks that are due at a specific time. Now they can separate those two in Care Assist where they can see just resident tasks or just non-resident tasks, um, but by default they do show together so that they can see everything together. Okay. Again, the non-resident task name, this is what the resident assistant will see in Care Assist. So this is what they are to do, the task that they need to complete. So let's say this is to vacuum front I am not spelling correctly there. Vacuum, front hall. Okay. And then as I move on down, the category for this particular task. So do I want this particular task to fall under a category of cleaning, supplies, temperature? Which category fits the task the best? And for this, it is cleaning. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And then when would I like this task to start? Um, I'd like this to start right away. So I'm gonna go ahead and select start date today. Um, I don't necessarily have an end date in mind for this. This is something that I'd like everybody to continue to do on an ongoing basis. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that open-ended. Okay. And then right here is how often I would like this task to be completed. So for here, I do want this to be done on a daily basis, but I'd like it to be done um, in the afternoon. Because no, I'm knowing that maybe my morning shift is really busy. Afternoons are a little bit more slow, so I'm going to pick that time frame for this to be done. So I'm going to go ahead and select. Um, let's look in here. I'm going to do that evening and then I'll just adjust the time here. So I'm going to select every evening and this I'd actually like it to be just during shift one or excuse me shift two. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select shift. I'm going to change this to shift two and that's the 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. Okay now I think my residents might get annoyed if I have my people cleaning at 11 o'clock at night with a vacuum. So I could adjust that. So maybe I do want to, you know, second guess that. I'll go back to the time slot. And let's actually do about 3.30. Okay, so we'll do 3.30 for this. So this is going to be every day at 3.30 p.m. I'd like someone to go in and vacuum the front hall on the east wing. Okay. As I move on down here, under task assignment, do I want this to be a community-wide task or something that's going to be by work list? If I select community, I have two options. One common task created for all care settings, and that means if I have a community that's got, say, um, well, for your purposes, you just have the community with an AL or IL. So you would pretty much just be using this one. Okay, so a separate task is created for each care setting. And so what that means is that each of these care settings has to complete that particular task. So there's two tasks really. The AL needs to complete this for their East Wing and the memory care has to complete it for their East Wing. Okay. If it's one common task, what that means is it doesn't matter who does this. Maybe there is only East, one East Wing and I don't particularly care if it's an AL RA that does this or a memory care RA that does this. I just want that completed and I don't necessarily care which person from what care setting does it. Okay. If I go by work list instead, I have the same two options in terms of one common task or two separate tasks. 
but with the separate tasks here, it's by work list, okay? Since this task is specifically directed at the East Hall, I really only want this task to be showing in the East Hall work list. The East Hall work list is essentially um, anyone that logs into Care Assist, if they happen to be working on the East Hall that day, they would select East Hall, which then filters out um, the apartments that happen to be on that side of the building. And those individuals, when they log into East Hall, will also see this particular cleaning task, but no other work list would see it, only those that selected the work list of East Hall. So uh, really up to you on your preference there and how you wanna schedule these out. Um, for us, I am gonna go ahead and just select East Hall for that though, okay. Under the positions, okay, this is the position that is assigned to the particular user who logs into Care Assist, okay. So let's say I am a director of nursing. I've logged into the East Hall, okay. If I do not define a specific position, that means all of these positions will see that task to be that needs to be done. However, if I want this task to be specifically completed by an RA within East Hall, I can select resident assistant. Then when an RA logs into Care Assist and selects East Hall, they will see that task that needs to be completed, but no other user will see that particular task. So only an RA would then see that task to be completed. And so therefore an RA would be the one to do it. Okay. I don't particularly who care who does this. Um, so I am gonna leave it open. But again, note that you do have the ability to identify it by role, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. Once I hit save here, it does add to my task list view. So these are currently all of the tasks that I have within my community that are scheduling, okay? So I can see vacuum front hall on the east wing. I can see that the assignment is uh, once an evening, east hall. I did not select a position, so that column is blank. Let's say I needed to go in and I actually need to end a particular task, okay? perhaps mop the floors and the entry or record med refrigerator, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. If I need to end the particular task, that is done by updating the end date. So rather than leaving this as open-ended, if this is something I no longer want them to do, I would go in and I'd enter in an end date and perhaps I would prefer that it end today's date. I can go ahead and enter that, okay? or perhaps I don't want it ever done again. I don't even want it to show up today. I'm gonna to go ahead and enter in yesterday's date. And as soon as I hit save here, okay, what's going to happen is that particular task, you'll notice no longer has a hyperlink and it is now inactive. So I can see the end date here was yesterday just like the vacuum entry hallway or entryway was also ended on the 15th. Okay. But I can still see those that are currently active, which are identified with the open end date, or it could be any date that's in the future would still be an active task. So active tasks will have a hyperlink where you can go in and you can still update those tasks. Inactive tasks will be grayed out like this, and you will not be able to modify those particular tasks. Okay. From here, what I do wanna do is I want to go ahead and walk through the very next section, which is under that facility menu, okay? We just covered scheduler and specifically the non-resident tasks portion of that scheduler. And again, that's a community-wide tasks. And now I'm gonna to go to verify care assist tasks. The verify care assist tasks page by default will appear as though it is blank. So you'll see here, there are no pending tasks schedules 
exist for this particular community. And that's all also um, actually because of this little checkbox. If you'd like to see currently assigned tasks, then you want to go ahead and select this checkbox. The page will update, and any resident that currently has tasks scheduling inside of Care Assist will display on this page. You'll be able to see the resident's name. You'll also see the effective date of the service plan that is driving the tasks inside of Care Assist. If you open up any one of these accordions, you will actually be able to see the individual tasks that are scheduling. So for Fred here, I can see that he does have quite a few tasks in here. Um, given my page view, I am uh, not gonna zoom out, just I wanna keep the text a little bit bigger for everybody. But there would be quite a few, as I kind of scroll down, any task that's currently scheduling inside of Care Assist um, that's coming from that service plan for this resident. So in here, I can see this very first one. We have a bathing task. Uh, it falls under the ADL category. We have our task details here. Uh, assist with bathing, showering, and it's a partial to total assistance, okay? I can see that uh, it's expected to take 30 minutes. Um, I'm to assist them with washing back lower extremities, drying off, and also to observe for any skin issues and report those to the nurse. The frequency that's been set is over here. I can see that this has been scheduled for weekly on Mondays and Thursdays. And I can see that for Monday, I specifically set a 10 a.m. time uh, in shift one. So I can see both shift one and 10 a.m. display. Okay. I can also see for Thursday, it looks like it's 8 a.m. and shift one were selected. Okay. For this particular item here, for weekly tasks, you will actually see one line for each weekly task, okay? So looking at this frequency here on the right under assigned frequency, you'll notice that this says every week on Monday at 10 a.m. and that relates to this one here. This one down below every week on Thursday at 8 a.m. relates to the second weekly task, which is the Thursday 8 a.m. task here. Daily tasks do not display like that. You will notice that that is just one line assigned as BID 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. Again, corresponding with the time that's let, set here, okay? The reason for that is let's say that for this particular bathing task on Thursday, we need to just adjust that Thursday's task. We don't need to do anything with Monday's task only Thursday. Again, this is meant for temporary changes. So what I can do is I want to select the task I would like to adjust. So I'm gonna go ahead and place a checkbox in here. And then right up above, select the frequency. So for this one, it's still going to be weekly, but I actually, um, I need to adjust the Actually, yeah, let's still do weekly, but I'm going to adjust the specific day of the week, okay? So it's Monday, weekly, let's do Friday, okay? And this is... Not necessarily a time range is what I want. Maybe I'd like a specific time. Okay. And I don't want the description to display as AM med pass because that might be a bit confusing for them. So I'm just going to go ahead and put time instead. So this time it's going to be Friday at 6 AM. Okay. And let's say that this is really only something I want for this particular week. That would be a great example of when you would do this. In your service plan, you can adjust the days of the week as well as the times for any given of those tasks, right? However, let's say that it's really just this upcoming Friday, upcoming Friday's task that you want to adjust. You don't want to adjust every single Friday moving forward. 
So you don't necessarily want to adjust the whole service plan, just this upcoming Friday's task. Okay. That would be a great example of when you would come here and look at just that Friday and then, or Thursday, excuse me, adjust it from Thursday to Friday, make it the specific time that the resident has requested. And then you want to go ahead and apply that to the selected tasks. Once I apply that, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and go back to Fred here. Okay, I am now going to see that the original selection was Thursday at 8. And now I can see that it's once a day on Friday at 6 a.m. Okay. The Monday task hasn't been modified or adjusted. It's just this Friday's task. Okay. And then once Friday has passed, we've completed that particular task at the 6 a.m. I can come back in here, reselect that particular um, task, and I can adjust it back to what it needed to be. So I can go ahead and say it's still going to be uh, timing weekly Thursdays 8 a.m. Okay. Go ahead and apply. And now we're back on Thursdays at 8. Okay. So these are meant to be very short term. You need to just do a quick adjustment. For something coming up this week, it's not a long-term thing that's going to be a permanent change. Um, so you have this ability here. Okay. Keeping in mind that, again, weekly tasks have two separate lines, whereas daily tasks are going to have one line per daily task. And I just highlight that, though, because you could potentially get a little bit confused and select just this first one and actually set it to be Mondays and Thursdays for the assigned frequency in which case you'd actually have three showers scheduling. You'd have this one that's got two and this one that's got one. So just keep that in mind. There are two separate lines for weekly types of tasks, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and remove the show assigned tasks and it's just gonna hide those back up for me, okay? You may not use the Verify Care Assist task page regularly or very frequently, but it is an option that's available to help you kind of manage those um, last minute changes, okay? Okay, now the last little bit here is to really cover our reports options. Um, before I do that though, I do wanna open up the line for questions for anything that I have covered so far. Um, if you do have questions, please go ahead and unmute your line um, so we can hear each other. Are there any questions out there? Okay, not hearing anything here. Okay, I'll go ahead and minimize the agenda here and we'll dive into reports. Okay. <laughs> Since we are under the facility menu already, um, I'm just gonna go directly to the reports that are there. So I'm gonna go to facility, reports. So these reports are reports across the whole community. And so we'll be walking through that. Then we'll walk through resident reports. And those are reports that are specific to the resident that you've selected. Under the facility reports, there are three categories of reports that I want to hone in on. EMAR, orders, and then point of care. Okay. Under the EMAR category of reports, you have a couple of different ones in here. The administration compliance report allows you to see missed administrations for any medication across your whole community. Okay. So I can go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and select the administration compliance report. Go ahead and select next. Once I've selected the next option, it's gonna bring me to the ability to select my parameters for this particular report. 
I do want to go ahead and run the administration compliance report um, for this whole month. So I do want to see where I'm at right now. You'll notice it does default back to the start of this current month. If I were, say, in December, it would go back to the first part of December up to today, that date. So it's always the first of the month up to today's date. Okay. And then here, you can choose to select a specific resident if you would like to. Otherwise, because we are under the facility report, it will um, give you the ability to run it across all residents within that building. Okay. I actually do want that, so I'm going to go ahead and select all. I'm going to look specifically at the East Hall. Okay. And then as I move on down here, missed administrations. So for this, I want to look at missed administrations that fall within this date range, or it could be missed administrations prior to the state range, or both, which is essentially all of time. So that's going to be missed administrations prior to the state range and within the straight date range. Um, none means you don't want to see missed administrations at all. Okay. I do want to specifically look at this date range. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Near misses with inside of EMAR, um, when you are giving a medication, you may have not given a medication yet and it is currently displaying as late. Um, a late administration has a 60 minute window after um, where if the medication say is due at 8 a.m., you actually have a 60 minute window after that in which time it would still be considered on time. But as soon as it hits 61 minutes past 8 a.m., it is then considered late. The administration will still display and can be administered, but it would be considered a late administration. So this checkbox allows you to see anything that's out there that's currently displaying as late and has not yet been given. Okay, so it's considered a near miss. Obviously, once it has actually been missed, it would then be covered under a missed administration. Okay. Under the incomplete tasks, um, this allows you to kind of differentiate if uh, maybe a person has recorded that the task or the medication was not given. Okay, so for whatever reason, the medication was not given, it was recorded as not given, um, you can choose to filter for those particular tasks. A PRN in process administration is essentially if you've given a PRN medication, you will always have a follow-up task that is required. The follow-up task allows you to identify if the PRN was effective or not effective, and so if the follow-up task has not yet been completed, but the administration has been done or has been done, that is still a PRN in process because the full process has not yet been completed. You haven't done that follow-up task yet. Okay. And then here, any particular medication that may have been recorded as charted, uh, charted as not administered. Okay. And you can even go down to differentiate why it was not administered. Was it because the person um, documented that the medication had been discontinued? Maybe they didn't give it due to the condition, the drug wasn't available, it was on hold, resident refused, perhaps the resident was out. Whatever reason the user has selected, those reasons are available in this drop down or this filter here, so you can actually see that. And then you have the same option for late. So if a late administration was documented, why was it late? Okay. Same thing for early administrations. So let's say that the resident is gonna be out of the building, they're gonna go visit family. And so you've prepped the medications, you've given them the medications to take with them. In that situation, the medications were likely given to the resident early, um, simply because they were not gonna be in the building at the normal scheduled time. And so those types of medication administrations, you can actually differentiate those options here as well. Okay. And then here is a very key one. The prep and not administered and confirmed was done by different users. So inside of Care Assist, the user would go in and prep the medication. 
that is equal to essentially taking the pill or something out of the bubble pack or vial, whatever you use. And then when you've prepped it, you then would then select given and then complete. If the prepped was done by someone different than the person who marked given and complete, those scenarios would show up if you checked this box. So that allows you to see if someone maybe didn't fully complete their task. They went in, they said they prepped it, but then they didn't go through and actually confirm that the medication was given and then complete the task. And someone else came in and did that for them. You can actually see when that's been done utilizing this checkbox. Okay. As well as any time a medication has been amended. So when I was back in the orders page for Frank, I had amended his acetaminophen. So any time an amended administration is done or documented, uh, those could display here. Okay. And then you can even drill it down by the specific user. I'm actually going to go ahead and select all for this. I'm going to remove that because it's going to be super long. I do like to sort by residence. I'm gonna leave it that way. PDF's good. Go ahead and hit report. This is gonna be a pop-up window, okay? You'll notice it just lets you know it may take a little bit to uh, load. Okay. And so when I'm logged in here, this is a missed administration. So all of these administration times and medications were missed in this period of time. So when I'm looking at Fred here, I'm gonna zoom in. Okay. So when I'm looking at Fred here, I can see uh, in-house from 1-1 one -one to 1-19, okay, for Fred. And I can see that we're currently looking at missed administrations for Fred. For his acetaminophen, it's given uh, two tablets four times per day. And so as a result, I would see four administration times on 1-1, the first of which was six, then it looks like it's 12 p.m., 4 p.m., and 9 p.m. All four of those administration times are missed, which is why they are displaying under the missed administrations. Now, if you want to do it as a little bit uh, smaller view, um, I can go ahead and close that particular one. And maybe I'll just actually look at today's date, make it a little bit smaller. Okay. I think Helen Park had orders, so we'll look at her specifically. Nothing missed as of yet today. So let's do Helen Park for the last 19 days. Okay. Okay. So for the last 19 days here, I can see um, aspirin once in the morning uh, between this time frame, so between 6 and 10.30. These administrations were all missed, okay? And so as I'm looking in here, it looks like I've got quite a few missed. This administrations, let's see if she's got any near misses. Anything that's listed out there is late. Okay, so at the very bottom here, we've got a summary. Okay, and I can see here, uh, misadministrations, there is a near miss. And that's going to show at the bottom here. So I'm going to take a look.
Okay, no different user options, uh, no amend in this particular piece here. Okay, so it just really looks like we've just missed a ton of her administrations here. I'm looking up at the top. Again, this is a lovely compliance report and there's a lot of options in terms of parameters. So really what you're looking for here, um, kind of play around with it, see which view you really like. Um, but this is again, gonna be that, that key report if you wanna know what's going on with your EMAR administrations. I'm gonna go ahead and go back though. I do wanna go back to the facilities reports. Okay. Administration history report, okay. This particular report is gonna show you what administrations have been done. So the administration compliance report really focuses on anything that's missed, late, early. Facility administration really focuses in on that that has been given or done, okay? You also have something in here for the PRN. So this is gonna be obviously focusing in on just the PRN administration history. This is really helpful because one of the options in this particular report is to see if the if that particular PRN has never been given. Okay, so I can come in here and I can look, there's one option in here, PRN status of not used. So I can actually come in here, I could say, I wanna look at any PRNs that have not been used by residents within this time frame. okay? So I can come in here, I can see, okay, it looks like I've got everyone in here. And uh, yeah, that's good. Let's do a page break by resident though, make it a little bit easier. <laughs> okay, so for Jane here, I have two medications that have never been given. So at least not in this time frame that I'm looking at. So there's milk of magnesia as well as the nitro. So it looks like at least within this time frame, we've not used either of these medications, okay? At least, and that's for Jane here. I move on to do page breaks, and there's Joanne. Uh, same thing, acetaminophen, not been used. Same thing here for the acetaminophen, okay? And that just really helps you to know if perhaps that medication is not something that is useful. You know, maybe you're just really not using it. Maybe go back and um, check in with the doctor to see if that's something that should still be on the resident's record. Okay. I do wanna move on to the orders area. So under the orders category, the one I really wanna look at is physician orders, okay? So physician orders is going to be essentially, um, think of it like if you have a resident that's gonna go visit a, a physician and you need them to, that physician to sign off on specific orders, okay? That's what the physician orders page is for, the report here. Go ahead and select that. Active residents only. So you can run this by your specific resident or if I'm looking in here, I wanna see what are the physician orders that I've currently got out there. In here, okay. So as I'm looking in here, I'm looking at Joanne, she happens to be the first one up here. And I've got a list of prescription medications, okay. Her attending is Joe Anderson, okay, and then I've got a couple of different ones. So here's ordered by Mark, by Joe, a lot of them by Joe. And then right at the bottom here is where the physician can actually sign. The RN can do a review, um, sign and noted by, and then the pharmacy review. So this is really just a page that you can use in, to facilitate that communication between physicians, pharmacy, as well as your RNs. This particular physician's order from the facility level, um, it's going to be an individual um, sort of order physician's order report for each resident. So there is a page break for each resident. So here's Frank's physician's order page. And if I move on down there, here's the signatures for him. There's Fred, 
his orders, and then the signature section will be for him as well, okay? Go ahead and go back here. Also under orders, you can run an antibiotic medication report. This allows you to see who all is on antibiotics across your whole community. You can even sort this by the type of antibiotic. So if I go in here, so here we've got our drug classes. So you can see that there's a bunch of different ones. So there's even antifungal. So you can do it by the drug classification. Um, specific time frame. It does go to a 30 minute window or a 30 day window, excuse me. Um, so just keep that in mind. You are looking at 30 day chunks of time. You can also look to see who ordered the medication, um, show only new antibiotics. Okay. And let's go ahead and do a report, see if I've got any. not do the new. I'll just do all of them. Oh, I thought I had a zipper out there. Um, okay. Well, with that, um, you can do it by different types again. So if you scroll down here, antibacterials, antifungals, you can see there's a bunch of different options, antivirals in here as well. Okay. So this antibiotic report allows you to just kind of see who all is on an antibiotic. There's also a couple of other ones in here under orders. You can run an antipsychotic one. Um, so here we've got antipsychotropic medications report. So you can actually see who is on, on antipsychotropics um, across your community. Okay. And let's move into the point of care. So under the point of care category of reports, this information is coming directly from what's been entered inside of Care Assist. So this very first one here, point of care compliance senior living, this is going to show you any missed as well as completed tasks um, from Care Assist point of care. The point of care extra services report is just that. So anything that has been documented above and beyond the normally scheduled point of care tasks are gonna show under this report. And then any time a task that is completed as part of the non-resident tasks, so those community-wide tasks, you'll be able to run this report for. So the point of care non-resident task history report. Okay. So if I go ahead and look at the compliance report here, let's go back to last week. I'm just going to do one day at a time though. So we'll look at particular resident. I do want all task categories. And then right below here, I can actually say, would I like detail, summary, or detail and summary? I'm gonna go ahead and include both so you can see what the difference is. And then right here, it is, and what you'll find most of the time is most of the use reports do come only in the PDF format. There are a select few that do have the Excel format option, um, but this one is just a PDF. So go ahead and hit report. Okay. So looking at our report here, um, I did look at Fred. So here on the selections, I can see what I had picked. So I looked, I'm looking at just Fred and I'm looking at detail and summary of the point of care compliance. The, going from left to right, on the left we've got the date first and then the specific time or shift that the task is due, the resident's name, their current location. Here's the task category type. So if it's an assistive device, dressing and grooming, the specific scheduled time that it was due. So here I can see that within shift one, I had a couple that were due at eight, 10, two, uh, seven here. And as I'm moving over, I can see what that task is that was not, and it looks like it's task incomplete here. So 
This is assist uh, one staff to meals or activities to two times per day, use assistive devices, wheelchair or walker. For dressing and grooming, extensive assistance, put clothing on, take clothing off with partial assistance and completing any grooming tasks, okay? For this dressing and grooming item, do, uh, let's see here, there actually happen to be two dressing and grooming items, one at ADM for extensive assistance with putting on clothing, but it looks like there's another one in here at ADM for TED hose, okay? These are all incomplete tasks, so things that were not done. And then as I move on down here, we move into shift two, same sort of view, get down to the task type and then the specific time that task was scheduled, what the task was, and this is really the detail view. So where you get down to that nitty gritty detail of what the actual task was. The summary view, if I move to the bottom here, looks like this, where it just becomes counts, okay? So you're actually going to be able to see for each date, okay? So here's the 15th. I can see for assistive devices, the seven to three, there were eight required tasks, okay? Here's the breakdown by category type. One task was answered. So that gives you a task completion rate of 5.6%. Okay. So that is broke down by shift and then by task type. So this is more of a count of what's been going on versus the actual detail of the tasks themselves. Okay. So depending on your preferred view, you can do detailed or summary, or you can do both together. Okay, let me close that out. We'll go ahead and go back here. Okay, and if I go to the extra services report, go ahead and select next here. I'm gonna go back to the first of the month. Um, go ahead and select. Yeah, let's do all of them. I do want to actually choose to include uh, actual minute totals. And what that means is that if the person, when they are recording this, records the actual minutes spent, so they put in minutes of service, I also want it to give me the minute total. So that's across my whole community. How much time did I work or spend on things that were not scheduled? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit a report here. I'm going to open up that pop-up window. Okay. So as I'm looking here, we've got Fred first, okay? And each day that we documented something outside of the normally scheduled areas. So here we've got a mobility option here, complete with exception, resident required need more assistance. Um, so he needed assistance getting out of bed and struggled to move closer to the bed edge and left and lift himself. So that person recorded 10 minutes. Okay, looks like this one here, 35 minutes because originally refused. So here we've actually got our minutes of service for each of these tasks. And as we look down at the bottom here, 155 minutes for ADL, 15 for related health related, 60 minutes for housekeeping, 35 for mobility. And so as a total for the month, um, at least for this date range, one, one through 119, we have so far done 265 minutes of services outside of our normally scheduled tasks for Fred. I can see that if I go down to Judith here, a little bit better, um, only 60 minutes outside of my normally scheduled tasks for her. If I look up for Jane, it's like maybe, uh, 45 minutes, so ADLs was 40, and then we had health-related services of five minutes. And there we go, so yeah, resident sad, one-on-one -on -one attention, okay. So here you can actually see this per resident, and then as I go on down, we'll get to the very end here. This is your community total. So across the whole community for all of the residents within the time frame. What does that extra service minutes look like? So across the whole community, there were 760 minutes total, 580 of which were in the ADLs, 
And then you can see again that breakdown by category type um, across the whole community as well. Okay. I'll go ahead and close that particular report. Go back. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So that does actually bring me to the end of our training for today. Um, so I do wanna go ahead and uh, open up the lines here. Um, any questions about what we've covered so far? Again, we will have another training next week. Um, I believe it's next week specifically for Care Assist. Um, it might be a different week, but I apologize if I'm incorrect on that. <clears throat> Are there any questions about today's training? Anything that I've covered so far? I do have I do have one question. Sure. How do you um, create alerts on a chart, such as if a patient is a DNR on Coumadin, a seizure disorder? Is there a way to put alerts? So the alerts, it's not for those particular pieces. Um, we do have banner flags that can be added. Those actually show on the, ba the banner themselves. So if I were to pull open Fred here, um, it would show right along here. So like this one's DNR, DNI. And that actually is coming directly from my advanced directive section here. So some options automatically show on the display in the banner, um, but in terms of alerts, uh, those types of things aren't something that can be alerted. Um, but I know that Linda has a couple of additional pieces that she wanted to walk through with you. So um, those particular things are something that I believe Linda will be covering with you because there are specific BHS policy pieces that she covers with everybody. Okay. Any questions about what I have covered today? Order entry process or whatnot? Okay, well, great then. What I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording.